Live from WSIL-TV in high definition, this is News 3. Good evening, Governor Pat Quinn this afternoon signed legislation that increases the state income tax by two thirds. The tax hike means individuals will now pay 5% instead of three. The corporate rate jumps from 4.8% to 7%. The General Assembly approved the tax hike in party line votes during a lame duck session late Tuesday and early Wednesday. Today, there was more criticism of the move. Texas Governor Rick Perry said the tax hike could help his state lure jobs away from Illinois. He joins the governors of Wisconsin and Indiana who have said the decision will hurt Illinois. We're joined now by State Representative John Bradley of Marion, the only Southern Illinois lawmaker to vote for the tax increase. A Dan Wrights. Dan Wrights voted for it also. Dan Wrights, <laughs> borderline in our area. Yeah. There's a lot of anger out there about this. What do you say to people who are being asked to pay hundreds or even thousands of dollars more a year because of what they consider, you know, financial mismanagement and discipline and mistakes by state leaders? It's not their fault. Well, um, I'm a young man. We inherited a mess that's been going on for nearly half a century. And so the events leading up to this were... We have significant pension reform in the state of Illinois that saved the state as much as $150 billion. We've done Medicaid reform, which would save the state hundreds of millions of dollars. Governor Quinn has cut about $3 billion out of the budget in the last two years. We have ongoing efforts to reform workers' compensation. We have ongoing efforts to reform education reform. We've taken a personal pay cut. I think you lead by example. We've cut our own pay. We've cut our own benefits. We have tightened our belt. We have put all kinds of measures in place to change the way the budgeting is done in the state of Illinois once and for all. And despite all that, when we were on Monday and we were on Tuesday, we faced a situation where the financial market was getting ready to basically call our notes. They were going to send us to junk bond status. We're on the verge of not being able to keep the schools open, not being able to keep government functioning, and we were running out of options. And so despite all the efforts that we've made at reform, despite the ethical reforms we've done, despite all the belt tightening, we were on the verge of a state financially collapsing, of the state going into default or bankruptcy. And so that was a context in which I made the vote. The majority of it is a temporary. It's designed to pay down debt. Um, it's designed to try to get the state back on, on sound footing, to pay our bills, to get vendors paid. It's one of the most difficult, if not the most difficult, decision I've had to make as a legislator. I don't take it lightly. I don't shirk my responsibility. I'm going to be paying more taxes uh, as everyone else. But I, I think a lot of people suggest that they, don't, they didn't see the belt tightening. They don't feel like there's been enough reform of the system, that this is still kind of business as uh, usual. I, it's the same old, same old, I, taxing I, and spending. I understand that. And, and so part of what I want people to understand that have those concerns or those are justified but because we've not done a good job of explaining everything that has taken place. Budgeting for outcomes passed recently. It's a recent reform. It requires the state to justify every expenditure, show where that expenditure is coming from, and, and, and it doesn't happen unless that takes place. We put a cap on spending. So if at any point the state's spending increases beyond a very small margin, then the tax increase goes away. Now our general expenditures increase just on a regular basis, on an inflationary basis. I think it's somewhere between five and eight percent. I don't know the exact number. The spending cap is below two percent. So that's going to require additional cuts as we go forward if the tax is in place to get our debt paid, to get the thing stabilized, and then for it to go away hopefully in four years. So what do you say about those who say this is bad for the business climate in Illinois? This is going to drive jobs out of the state or people looking to open a new plant or going to go to other neighboring states? Well, I appreciate those comments. I respect those comments. We're working on workers' comp. We've done significant belt tightening and Medicaid reforms. There's more to do. Um, the majority of corporations, the majority of businesses, are not affected by the corporate rate. The corporate rate affects C corporations. The majority of businesses uh, pay at the personal income tax level as an S corp or an LLC or a sole proprietorship. So uh, this is a difficult situation. We're in dire straits as a, dire straits as a state, um, and I didn't feel like that we could allow the state to financially collapse, which is where we were headed. We have school districts that can't get gasoline. Uh, we have a situation where they were getting ready to, to downgrade our credit to junk status. I mean, this was a dire situation. I did not take it lightly. I take it very seriously. We're, my wife and I are raising two small kids in this state. 
my grandmother, before she passed away earlier this year, still has the original deed from the United States government to the land she lives on in southern Illinois. We've been in southern Illinois our whole lives. We intend to stay here. We're trying to save this state, and it's going to take more than a year or two to do it. Okay. John Bradley, we thank you for coming in and joining us to talk about this tax increase. Thanks for being thank here. You.